Fun Facts presents the 1954 Chevrolet Corvette C1. It is a 50s classic car and 60s because this was introduced back in 53 and it had a run through 1962. So if you're excited, I'm excited and let's get started now. Okay, the 1953 model year was not only the Corvette's first production year, but at over 300 produced, it was the lowest volume Corvette. The cars were essentially hand-built and techniques evolved during the production cycle, so that each 1953 Corvette is slightly different. All 1953 models had polo white exteriors red interiors, and black canvas soft tops. Order guides showed heaters and AM radios as optional, but all 1953 models were equipped with both. Over 200 1953 Corvettes are known to exist today. They had independent front suspension, but featured a rigid axle supported by longitudinal leaf springs at the rear. The cost of the first production model Corvette in 1953 was $3,490. The quality of the fiberglass body was as well as its fit and finish were lacking. Other problems such as water leaks and doors that could open while the car was driven, great, were reported with the most severe errors corrected in subsequent units produced, but some shortcomings continued beyond the Corvette's inaugural year. By December 1953, Chevrolet had a newly equipped factory in St. Louis ready to build 10,000 Corvettes annually. However, negative customer reactions in 1953 and early 1954 models caused sales to fall short of expectations. Oh no, oh my God. I mean, you know, people are falling out of the car driving down the road. <laughs> that, that reminds me of a truck I once owned, but that's another story. In 1954, only 3,640 of this model were built and nearly a third were unsold at the year's end. New colors were available, but the six-cylinder engine and Power Glide Automatic, the only engine and transmission available, were not what sports car enthusiasts expected. It is known that the 1954 models were painted pennant blue, sportsman red, and black, in addition to the polo white. All had red interiors except for those finished in pennant blue, which had a beige interior and beige canvas soft top. Order guides listed several options, but all options were mandatory. How's an option? <laughs> and all 1954 Corvettes were equipped the same. So, so much for options. Okay. In October 1954, issue of popular mechanics, there was an extensive survey of Corvette owners in America. The surprising finding was their opinions in comparison to foreign sports cars. It was found that 36% of those taking the survey had owned a foreign sports car and of that, half of them rated the Corvette as better than their previous foreign sports car. Nice. 19% rated the Corvette as equal to their foreign sports car, and 22% rated the Corvette as inferior. While many were well pleased with the Corvette, they did not consider it a true sports car. The principal complaint of the surveyed owners was the tendency of the body to leak extensively during rainstorms. There's a solution there, gentlemen. Don't drive it in the rain. So in 1955, the Chevrolet debuted a 265 cubic inch, 4.34 liter small block, 195 horsepower. 
and in 1955, and the engine was available for the Corvette. Early production, the 1955 V8 Corvettes continued with a mandatory option power glide transmission. Okay, we have an article here from supercars.net and I'm gonna read a small portion of the blog here. So, the 1954 Chevrolet Corvette. In the second year of Corvette production, only minor updates were made to make it more usable. Although these upgrades were modest, the 1953 version with a limited production of 300 is still much more desirable. Yeah, because you could fall out, I guess, I don't know. Okay, one external difference that separated the 1954 model was its longer exhaust tips. Okay, I'm excited. Longer exhaust tips. Meant to reverse the effects of exhaust sucking back into the car. Yes, that, that would not be good in 1953. Along with trying to keep your passenger in the car. This was only really cured in the 1955 when the exhaust was rerouted completely underneath the bodywork. Where the 1953 model could only be ordered with a white body and red interior, 1954 opened up new colors such as pennant blue and the sportsman red, but 80% were still ordered in polo white. Black was the rarest of the official colors and was only used on four to six copies. That would be extremely rare. Inside the 54 was slightly upgraded to include a single hood latch and relocated choke. The removable side curtains were also matched to the interior color. Under the hood, an upgraded cam gave the blue flame inline six an extra five horsepower to 155 bhp. Furthermore, a new rocker arm cover was fitted, which on later cars was chromed. Compared to the 353 models, 3,640 1954 Corvettes were produced at a sales price of $2,774, and this model was replaced by the V8 model of 1955. The international racing debut of the Corvette came in 1954 when Bill Von Esser and Ernest Poltz ran that year's running of the Carrera Panamericana in the 1954 model. Unfortunately, the engine threw a rod in the first leg of the race. That would be, yeah, that, that's not a good sales pitch there. Chevrolet also started advertising its new two-seater, including a print campaign with the headline, First of the Dream Cars to Come True. The words weren't hyperbolic. The Corvette was gaining in recognition and availability. Indeed, by the end of the year, Chevrolet had produced 3,640 Corvettes, more than 10 times as many as the year before. Slowly, steadily, Harley Earl's vision was changing the face of the American sports car scene. This was a year for bringing life to the Corvette. In preparing for the 1954 Chevrolet had focused on a production line rather than on engineering breakthroughs. As a result, changes to the 54 model were generally minor. A mid-year camshaft modification raised the output of the blue flame six cylinder by five horsepower to 155 we said that already the stainless steel exhaust, exhaust tips were lengthened we said that already and the paint chances paint choices increased to four we said that already convertible tops were now tan instead of black door handles were redesigned for easier operation such improvements were welcome but the public the progress on the Corvette in 1954 must have seemed measured at best. Behind the scenes, though, Chevrolet's engineering offices were 
in a whirlwind of activity. Feeding the storm was an ambitious new Chevy engineer whose name would soon become synonymous with the Corvettes. Zora Arkus Duntov. Born in Belgium to Russian parents, Duntov had grown up in Europe studying engineering and driving race cars. After joining Ed Cole's Corvette team in 1953, he immediately began a determined crusade to forge the new Corvette into the true high-performance sports car he was certain it should be. It wasn't enough, Duntoff reasoned, for the Corvette to be as visually captivating as rival models from the Jaguar, MG, and Ferrari. The Corvette had delivered the performance goods too. That meant more power, a manual transmission, and a more sophisticated handling tune suspension. Okay, well, if you found yourself this far into the video, thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch the video. And if you like our video, please give us a thumbs up. It really does help our channel. And if you like our channel, please subscribe because we'll be doing all the cars in the 50s and 60s, the muscle cars, sports cars. We'll be doing hybrid cars and supercars. We'll be doing autoramas and car shows, hot rods. So a little bit of everything for everybody. And again, we thank you for taking the time out of your day. We hope to see you when we upload our next video. And always, always, always take good care. Thank you.